Come join me in my creative space where we can paint, learn, and have a few laughs. So get comfy and let's get started. Welcome everybody. Thanks for joining me. It's Kat. Uh, today we're going to be starting our herb uh, series. So I, I think I'm going to tackle one, maybe two herbs each time, depending on the, the difficulty level. This is a nine by six piece of Arsh cold pressed cotton paper. Uh, I'm just telling you what I'm using in case you're curious. I have also mixed here a mixture of hooker's green and lemon yellow. I will then use just more concentrate hooker's green later for the shading. And um, these are going to be relatively uh, so so-called tighter paintings. They're not going to be all loosey splashy. I think I'll do a, a loose series in the future, but this one is always good to start with because you do learn about your lights and your darks, etc. And then when you go loose, you still have an idea of where those need to be, but you don't have to be so precise about it. So enough talking, let's get started. I'm going to include this drawing in the at the end of the video for those of you who would like to have one handy. This is an extremely watery consistency of lemon yellow and hooker's green. And this color will represent the lightest part of the leaves. I really hope you can, you're able to see my sketch lines, but if you watch my videos regularly, you'll, you'll often hear me say that I don't like pencil lines in my work. Often my tutorial paintings end up in a drawer, a very large drawer. <laughs> uh, but uh, for this particular series, I am going to frame these and use them. So I need them to have no pencil lines. Did I mention we're doing basil? Okay, let's start. In case I didn't mention we're doing basil, we're painting basil today. And it's just a, one stalk of basil and it grows rather uh, oddly. You have the tiny little leaves and then right under your, you'll have these big large leaves and they're absolutely delicious when they're fr fresh. So with that nice soft brush, I put in a very watery consistency and I'm going to, you get to choose your light because I'm not going by a drawing. This is my, my drawing. So I'm going to choose that the light's coming from this direction. So I'm going to take more concentrate hooker's green. And you do have to have it watery because if it's not watery, it won't get absorbed here. So since the light's coming from here, I will add some dark in the center. And baby leaves are a little bit different than the older leaves, but they still kind of curve, curve downward. They're kind of a rounded uh, leaf. Don't be afraid to add the darker values. They give your leaves form and uh, watercolor always dries lighter. So what you often think might be too much ends up being just right. Usually the baby leaves are a little more yellow. So you just have to make sure that it's darker in the center where they're starting to grow out from. This leaf I have here is touching this one. So I don't want to paint that yet. I'll paint this one first. Whoops, forgot the paint. So make sure when you mix your own colors that you stir it up often. That you, because they do tend to separate from each other. And while that can be quite an interesting look, um, you won't get your the color that you're trying you're trying to achieve. Here we go. I have an old hospital card. I'm just going to gently establish a center vein and this one too right there. And later on you can there we go. You can put in some veins, if you extra veins with paint, which is what I'm going to choose to do. Now, this one, this uh, basil leaf is coming forward towards us. So I'll just touch in a nice soft, and it kind of comes down like a sharp point. And what these veins help you to do is establish 
the shape of the leaf. So you can paint these on if you, if you prefer or gently etch them in. Now, before that gets too dry, I'm going to add in some darker hooker's green. I'm using my brush that's too big. Always use a small brush for this part so that you don't oversaturate your saturate is in being wet, not color. So you don't put too much water on your on your page. And you're, what you're trying to do is once when, when a leaf is rounded like this, it, it folds down, the light is always going to hit the top of the leaf more than the bottom of the leaf. The bottom of the leaf is going to be farthest away from your light. I'm going to work on this one because this one is still, I think I could do this, but I don't want to chance it because I like how this is turning out. So I'm going to go and work on this one down here. So once again, very watery. So the wateriness is to try to establish the lightest part of your, of your leaf. This leaf is kind of a side view. It's flopped over. So the darker part of here isn't actually too dark, but it is darker than this because it's, it's catching the light from this direction. And now I'm going to go darker down here. Like that. I think for this one, I wonder, yeah, I'll do it. I'm going to scratch in the vein. So the vein is almost up here, all the way close to the top, because we're kind of looking at a half of a of a leaf, of a a basil leaf here. Okay, so we'll see how that goes. It's always a little bit of a surprise when we do it this way. And I'm going to continue to do the to, to do these the same way. So we can talk about other stuff if you like. Now I like to cook. I used to take some, some uh, pork and I cut it up. This is flipped over this little leaf. And then I would have it on tortillas. Like I would get some nice flat wraps and I would just going to do under this flipped leaf. It's always a little darker where the vein's going to be. And darker down here. We're taking it slow. Okay. We're going to add some deeper values later. And so for these pork wraps, so then I cut up red peppers and onions and things like that. So I cooked the pork in some soy sauce and garlic. And then for the uh, dipping sauce, so I would take some cream cheese and I would mix it with the yogurt and I would chop some fresh basil right from the garden. And it was so delicious. So cream cheese and some yogurt and even some mayo if you really don't like the yogurt. Um, with some basil and a teeny bit of dry mustard. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. And of course you have to have garlic. <laughs> okay. This one too is facing downward. I'm curious if any of you have other hobbies aside from painting or if this is the only hobby you've ever uh, given, given any time to. My whole life, I've always had the burning desire to create and keep my hands busy. I'm one of those people who I do, I have, a, I've, I've finished furniture, I have, I quilt, I sew, I, which is not quite the same thing <laughs> for those who don't sew. Um, I, I like to cook, you know, of course, when I have time 
sometimes uh, you know it's harder than others to get make the time to do all these things and I crochet crochet is great if you're a snacker I snack at night it's my downfall I really have a hard time not snacking and so if you can crochet at night that that's a good fix for that problem coming down here the, I realize the drawing is very faint, so this is why I'm trying to quickly do this so you can see the base layers. So again, just trying to make give this a bit of a roundish look to it. I'll use my little card. And here, try not to I'll try not to touch the one I just did. And as I often say, you don't have to be perfect because if you look in nature, most of these things are not perfect. Now the light's coming from here and this is slightly flipped over there. I want to give that impression. So I'm going to make that darker. I just had to put out some new paint um, that, so it's still kind of soft in the in the uh, pen and so it's I'm having trouble getting it out without taking too much so just he, I'm barely touching it with that tip barely barely touching it if you want you can splash your colors oh, I just splashed water on my painting <laughs> get that real quick if you want, you could splash colors, but I will do a more loose painting of this in the in the near future because I do quite like painting loose as well. But I don't find this too, too tight of a painting. I don't think it is anyway. I decided to fast forward through a few of the segments that I feel are a little bit repetitive and I really want you to stick with me and not get bored. So if you want to slow it down, go to the settings tab on the YouTube screen. That should blend out quite nicely. If it doesn't, we will fix it. Now this one, it's coming from up here. So. If you have a specific, an interest in a specific herb that you would like to see painted, just leave it in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. So I'm putting in a tiny, tiny little bit of dark paint here because it's flipped over. The leaf is flipped over, so it's casting a shadow. I really like these two leaves. And for now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to wet here and just add a bit of very concentrated hooker's green and then we'll see where that goes i don't want to mess with them too much because i kind of like and they're very baby they're new they're new leaves so i don't want to to make them too too dark you know what i didn't do to this one is i didn't scratch in the veins so that's the only one that doesn't have it. So I'll have to paint those in later. I'm going to be quiet now. I'm going to re-wet this. I'm going to use the hooker's green. I need more. And I'm tappy, tappy, tippy, tappy there. Right underneath this leaf. That's casting a shadow. Rinsing my brush and dabbing it off, but it's not completely clean. And I'm going to play with this color and just make sure making sure it's soft, but adding adding some volume to your 
to your leaf so that you can tell that it's a round leaf. And how you do that is you emphasize where the light is on, on the, the leaf. You know, I almost called it a petal. And when I'm painting flowers, I call the petals leaves. So I'm doomed either way. Eh? I will do this leaf. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it's not a petal, it's a leaf. I'm just going to gently wet it. And I'm just reinforcing where I put my darks earlier. And they will also spread out. So because I already have a layer of it, it's going to change the value of it without changing the color. I'm still using the same color. I'm still using the same brush and consistency that I was before, but it is an extra layer. So it's, it's changing the value, which is the lighter darkness of a color. I mentioned in another video that I have, I know a couple of people who have them, but the one that is quite stunning, it's, it's, there are 12 herbs painted and they're quite large. They're, they're bigger than this and they are framed individually and some genius <laughs> actually had the patience to measure out how to hang these side by side and up and down. It was this perfect, and it's, and they have like a little dining nook and it's just beautiful. I wish I could show you a picture of it, but I mean, I feel awkward saying, can I take a picture of your wall, <laughs> of your, uh, your herbs? If you paint a set of these, you can do the same thing. You can, um, you can do two, three, five, ten, whatever you like. There are many, many, many herbs to choose from. Okay, so I'm going to drop some in here. This is wet on dry. I have not. And just adding because they're so tiny. I'm afraid if I wet the little ones first that the dark paint will just take over and I don't and I don't want that. I'm quite liking how these are turning out. When you're doing any botanical painting, it's also very handy to use yellow for your light because we associate the color yellow with, with the sun. So if you feel you've lost your light and it looks faded, then add a bit of yellow. And I'm going to show you that on one of these after. And, and it is quite, quite nice looking. And you don't have to go for photo, uh, like a photo replica here. That painting is different from from photography for a reason and I think there are some people who really can do photorealism it's it's incredible but I'm of the mindset that if you want to take a photo then take a photo why bother painting it because photography is an art too and I don't mean to sound preachy but just don't I, I hear so many people who say they can't draw and they can't they can't paint and because they can't get it to look like this. Well you're not supposed to. It's supposed to be an expression of of how you see things and how your hand feels when you're painting it. So don't worry about all that stuff. So wherever you add the darks and leave the lights, it, it gives your, your leaf movement. So I'm just dabbing in some shadows here and there so that the, the, the leaf doesn't look flat. And it's definitely looking like a basil plant to me. I think to, to this one, instead of doing the shading, I'm going to take some ye lemon yellow, which is a very strong color. So be careful with it. going to paint it right there because these little baby leaves do have a bit of a yellow yellow tinge to them see just brings something out this I'm going to put a bit a real little bit of yellow on it right there
And if you don't like that look, you don't have to do it. I'm going to start with the stem. I'm going to put, draw that there. And then this leaf kind of covers that part of the stem. Come down here. I'm going to go in with a very small brush. I think I'm going to use my itty bitty brush, this one. So with the darker green and this very small brush, it's going to be much darker underneath here. And then because the light's coming from this way, I'm going to make it darker there and this one's going to be darker under here and then over there it's going to cross over kind of and you can always soften things up so we're going to darken underneath here because that would be darker if you're feeling bold you can use a different color to do this. Like I would probably use uh, a blue of some kind. I don't want to do it in this tutorial because if this tutorial is being watched by a beginner, I do not want to confuse anybody. Um, but I would throw some blue in here because blue is cool in general. Most blues are cool and it sets things back. If you put choose to put some veining in with paint, just tickle the tip of your brush onto the leaf. Don't, um, don't use a heavy hand because they do look really artificial unless that's the style you're going for. I don't like that look on the leaves and I think that it would look much nicer if you just use a light hand. Just, it's very subtle. And as I said, when you put these in, the, the veins, it, it tells your viewer what direction the leaf is in. And these I, I think are very cute. I quite like these ones. See, so they barely need you to touch them. When you use a small brush, you have to load it more often, but it does make, make this tickling that I'm talking about a lot easier to do. I used to, when I was younger, I used to, um, my father-in-law would cut out with his jigsaw, he would cut out uh, decorative things and I would paint them. And I, I'm not sure if that's called toll painting, like if that's the um, official term for it. And uh, we kind of did this project together, it was fun. And uh, often it would be, you know, Christmas, Christmassy type things. And um, I worked with brushes like this all the time. And I, and I find it, you know, while some people may find it really tedious, it's so, I find it so relaxing. And I think that um, there are so many, if people have such expectations from themselves, but really, if you can paint and feel, if you can lose yourself, you've, you're not frustrated, you, that means you're doing something right. find that a bit too dark but oh well it is what it is just tickling it it's so difficult to just tickle but if you can do it it pays off I'm going to do this leaf now again I'm going to let this dry 
while this is drying, I am going to add a tiny bit of very, very, very wet sap green. So what I did, did just there, I just put a smidge of, I put some dioxazine purple into my hooker's green and I darkened it with that just a bit. And if there's anywhere else you'd like to do that, like just so, just to get that extra darkness in there, right there. Make sure the ferrule of your brush is dry. That's always very important. Just a tiny bit in the center of these new buds. Very loose lemon. Just a little bit. Like I said, you don't have to do that, but I do quite like the way it looks. I think that could use a bit more green in the lemon. Just trying to add a few sharper shadows in here. Now, the last thing I wanna show you before we end this video is if you feel that you've lost some light. If you feel that, for example, there should be more light here, just take a very soft brush. Soft, but not a wimpy one. You have to have something that is a little bit, has a little bit of a spring to it. Because if it doesn't, it won't take your paint off. It'll just move. Like, so if I use this, back and forth and back and forth and back. It's just gonna paint water onto it. It's not going to really remove any paint. So you have to use something firm. And I feel this one is, is, is missing some, some light here. So I am trying to get some back. I think that's better. And this one just needs a bit more shading around the sides. Okay, so that's it for the basil painting. Um, there's gonna be as many more as you like, so at least minimum four I will paint. If you would like to see a specific herb painted, then please do leave your request in the comments section below. I always read my comments and I love getting them from you. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Happy watercoloring. Bye-bye.